a challenge. There's no doubt. But my point to Dr. Fusa was that once you tell somebody you're going to die in the next 12 months if you don't do anything, there might be some more psychological effect. I mean, you're right now. I, I frame it a little bit differently on that. You hear it this and putting together different things I've heard. So first we're talking about primordial prevention, having good health and preserving it because your LDL stays low over the long time. And, and that, that's one aspect of it. What you're talking about is identifying super high risk people with a 15% one year or two year risk. Me, I'm a patent on cardiologist, my patient sees my nutritionist, excess physiology, but it's a little too late to do that alone at that point. You know that you look ahead, higher risk people, lifestyle alone did not do it. But at that point it's not sufficient. In a, in a very high risk person where that's the only thing you're doing. And I think that's when we get creative, I think, where you, whether it's PCSK9 for one year or two years or three years, whether it's something you know, more aggressive uh, from that perspective. So I think we're sort of talking about two different aspects. One is primordial prevention, uh, preserving good health, lifetime, lifelong uh, uh, preservation of low LDL. But for whatever reason, if you end up with a super high risk if we're able to use machine learning and identify in a very short amount of time, I think lifestyle alone based on it. Yeah, it is, will not, it's not, don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying don't do lifestyle. Yeah. I think it's complementary. But, but similarly, you wouldn't take, you know, I think what Dr. Fuster was saying is in freedom, these people, we didn't say don't take a statin. They, 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 the data suggests they're high enough to warn it. Your 50% says this is the person who should get it. But they wouldn't put it in the mouth. Only 20% would take the pill. And I think that's what the adherence part of that. I'm not sure that if you scare someone and say, boo, they're going to put it in the mouth anymore. Um, but their doctor at least says, this is someone I'll identify. I might not have before. So this is. Well, I think I'm going to go back to the analogy of cancer. Then you go ahead first. OK. Well, um, it might be sort of rambling, but I'll, I'll get there. So. Is it valuable, would it be valuable <coughs> to be able to identify someone at such high risk that we could predict a 50% chance in the next year that they're going to die? And, you know, I think that that would be a, a good contribution. I think that that would be useful. Um, would it really change how we practice? And I think the example of somebody hospitalized for an acute coronary syndrome who within a year has a 50% chance of still being on a statin who, uh, I don't know what the statistics are for a smoker to stay abstinent, but you know, the statistics are, are pretty crappy for somebody who has been told with a symptom that they have a very high percent chance uh, of, of dying within the next year. But that's not as more than 10, 15 percent now. You know, we put them on, you know, aggressive therapy after the event. And uh, my point was that trying to, to bring this primary prevention close to cancer and what we do in cancer once you find somebody with a tumor and you know the survival for 12 months is 15 percent and so on you in cause some action now if what i mean said if the treatment is all about what they do in a life coaching then obviously it's not enough but if you develop the interventions like what dr bravo says if it is more than 25 percent or if it's 50 percent it justifies a bypass then I think we can make a difference because now we have new tools that we could not use before. And so that's the point. And obviously we have, to have trials for those. And because there's such a short time, by definition, such a short term, we should be able to do a lot of trials because it only takes six months or a year to see the outcome. If, you know, that, it all comes back to these computer guys to develop that 25% or 50% machine learning algorithm. But once developed, the question is what we're going to do uh, you know, 